A man sent out to war in Gettysburg. An undying love cut short. And a ghost that persists to look and wander. Born on September 20th, 1820, being one of 13 children in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, John Fulton Reynolds made his story known in this area and his story is still told today as an excellent military strategist and the best commander of the North. Growing up, he lived in what is now known as 42 to 44 West King Street, which is the younger realty group. Eventually, in 1837, he was nominated to West Point Military Academy by the president at the time, James Buchanan, who was also from Lancaster and was a personal friend of Reynolds' father. Reynolds' father at the time owned the newspaper called the Lancaster Journal. Eventually graduating from West Point and coming to the rank of Major General at the time, he was offered to command the Army of the Potomac. Reynolds refused due to not wanting to take orders from Washington politicians, but would go on to lead battles such as the Battle of Bull Run, Chancellorsville, and most important helping to turn the tides of war in the most crucial battle in the Civil War, Gettysburg, the bloodiest three-day battle ever on American soil. Although love would come before the war, shortly before the three-day battle, he decided to get engaged to his beloved Catherine Mary Hewitt, who happens to be Catholic. But why does her religion matter? Well, Reynolds happened to be Protestant, which in those times didn't mix well, and they had to keep the engagement a secret. That wouldn't stop either of them because they planned to wed after John's return from the Gettysburg battle as a war hero. To show their undying love, John gave Catherine his class ring from West Point, while Kate gave him a gold ring with an engraving, Dear Kate, along with a medallion to wear around his neck that was supposed to keep him safe, as she said. She also promised him to enter a religious life if her beloved died in combat. As the war came along, John Fulton Reynolds led his Union soldiers into combat against the forces of the Confederacy. Charging into the lines of the enemy, John would have his fate sealed by a sharpshooter, hitting him right in the neck and going right through. He was one of the first fatalities of the battle and was the highest ranking officer on either side to perish during the three-day battle on July 1st. Two days later, Kate got the news of what happened to her love. With grief, full in her heart, Kate sat with the general's body through the night before the funeral. July 4th came along with the funeral, was at what is now the Fulton Theater and buried in Lancaster Cemetery next to the Lancaster General Hospital. Which if you go there today, you can still see the obelisk of his tomb along with the great accomplishments he had. Eventually, Kate returned to her hometown a while in Stillwater, New York, after getting rejected into Sisters of Charity Covenant in Maryland. They said that she wasn't suitable for community life, for grieving over a man who was not family or her husband. And later on in 1902, she ended up dying from pneumonia, never to be married. But that's not the end of this story. It said Reynolds' spirit never found peace on knowing Kate's grief for him or trying to meet his fiance so they could wed. Some have said to see him wandering in the Lancaster Cemetery at night near his grave. And some say if you feel a chill with the sight of a handsome, tall, and well-dressed man in the 1800s attire around 42 West King Street, 
That could be General Reynolds, still looking for his Catherine, 